Okay, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of how to record your total daily sales if you're a retailer or a restaurant. Uh, if you are a retailer or a restaurant, usually record your sales in a POS system that's separate from QuickBooks Online. Um, if that's the case, before you get started with this video, make sure that your POS system doesn't already integrate with QuickBooks Online because there's a handful of them that do. So if yours does, you can have it automatically record sales receipt transactions every day for you. If not, then you're going to have to do it manually, and this is a good place to start. So uh, we're going to start by going to our Settings button. We're going to go to Recurring Transactions, and we're going to create a new one. Transaction type is going to be Sales Receipt, because these are sales that we have actually received. Template name, we can just call it Daily Sales. For type, I'm going to make this unscheduled. Uh, you can make it scheduled, but just know that it's going to automatically appear uh, so if you forget to enter it, you may have some zero transactions showing up, which you may not necessarily want. Customer, I made a customer called Daily Sales. Payment method, I'll just leave blank as well as reference number. And then deposit to, I'm going to fill this out to checking account. Uh, basically, it kind of depends on how you're recording this, but what I'm doing here is I'm recording the net amount of the deposit is going to end up being the credit cards received, which will actually get deposited into the bank account automatically. You may, if you collect a lot of checks or something like that, you may want to rearrange this a little bit, but this is a good example for someone who collects primarily credit cards and then some cash as well. So to get started, I've made a spreadsheet here that kind of summarizes what your POS system breakdown for daily sales might look like. So. Uh, every POS system is different, but usually there's something like this where it shows you the total sales of each product, the payment summary, so how everybody paid you, and then you can also enter cash payouts. So if you uh, pay out for office supplies or somebody comes in and does some maintenance and you give them some cash or something like that, you, you can usually enter that in your POS system. And if you do, you know, if, if you have the ability to do it, it's definitely a good habit to make. So I would recommend doing that so it shows up on your daily report. That way you can tie out the cash in your drawer as well. So to get started, we're going to want to summarize all of this into data that can be put onto a sales receipt. So for pump sales, we are going to do equals this. We're going to want that to be a positive number. Same with rock fountains. Cash payments received, we actually want this to be a negative number. The reason for that, and if you don't understand it, it's okay. Ask your accountant to help you clear it up. But basically, uh, as, as far as a brief overview, when you're recording a sales receipt, the debit on the, the side of the transaction is going to be your uh, bank account, and the credit is usually going to be your income account. Since we're accounting for cash that actually went into a drawer, we're going to need a debit for this line item. In order to do that, we have to enter a negative number. So again, if you need help with that, ask an accountant, ask somebody uh, that has a an idea of how to how the accounting process works in QuickBooks. Uh, and then for cash payouts, we're actually going to add these two numbers together. And what this is doing is recording the subtraction from your cash on hand or cash in drawer account. Office supplies, again, we need that to be a debit, so we're going to enter that as a negative. Maintenance and repairs, we're going to enter that as a negative. Sales tax collected, we want to be a positive. And then down here, I'll do a formula to add up all of these. This should show basically the total credit card deposit that should hit your bank account. And to double check this, we'll take this number and we're going to subtract out all of these figures here. And you can see now that the proof is zero. I usually set this up. It's a good way to check your work and make sure you have everything accounted for. So now that we have that, let's go back to our recurring sales receipt and start getting that set up. So product or service, we're going to start with the pump. I'm going to start with quantity zero because each day's quantity is going to be different. The next item is rock fountain. Again, I'm going to put quantity zero there. And you can see the way that these products and services are set up in QuickBooks. This will actually keep track of the inventory as well in QuickBooks Online. If you don't keep track of inventory in QuickBooks Online, then basically you just don't have to worry about these quantities. You'll set up your different products and services uh, without tracking the inventory. But this example does track the inventory, which is a useful uh, thing if you need it. 
Then we're going to go back over here. Our next item is going to be cash payments received. So this I'm actually going to have to add a product. So I'll enter in cash payments received. This is a non-inventory product. No category. And then the income account, I'm actually going to put this in cash in drawer. If you don't have an account set up, you'll have to add it. So we want to basically treat this as a bank account and you can see cash on hand is to keep the uh, cash that your company tracks for occasional expenses. So we'll mark this cash in drawer, save and close. Okay, and then we don't want this to be marked as taxable because this is basically a recording a transfer from uh, you know one account to the other. So we'll mark non-taxable for that. Save and close. We can leave the quantity as one, rate zero, amount zero. Next one will be cash payouts. Non-inventory item. Cash payouts from drawer. Our income account, again, is going to be cash in drawer. We're going to mark this non-taxable. Save and close. Our next item is office supplies. This is a non-inventory item. Income account, we're actually going to want this to be an expense account, office expenses, and again non-taxable, save and close, maintenance and repairs. Okay, non-inventory account. and repair. This is an expense account. Non-taxable. Save and close. And then sales tax, this should be set up separately in QuickBooks Online. If you don't know how to set that up, make sure you get that set up correctly. This will calculate automatically on the sales receipt, so we don't actually need to manually enter this. It should pop up once we enter our taxable sales of any taxable items that we have. And then it'll have the total deposit. Again, this is going to be a calculated field on the sales receipt. So we want to make sure if our retail store is in California where it's 8%, we want to make sure that we have that set up properly. And now what we'll do is save the template. So then, now that we have our recurring transactions, you can go to this list and you can see there's a button that says Use. So we're going to use it. Sales receipt date, so you just put the current date that you're entering sales for. And now we're going to go in and start entering the information from our other form. So for, again, for any inventory items, you want to make sure that we actually enter in this quantity. If you don't keep track of inventory, don't worry about the quantity. So we have 15 for pump, 10 for rock fountain, 15 for pump, 10 for rock fountain, and the rest of these we're just going to fill in amounts. Cash payments received, negative 1,010.25. Cash payouts, $150, we'll enter that as a positive number. Office supplies purchased, negative 50. Maintenance and repairs, negative $100. And you can see it calculated $238 in sales tax. That matches this, which is the amount from our report. So that's perfect. And our total deposit should be 2,202.75. And you can see amount received, that does in fact match. So make sure you have the checking account marked. And everything looks good. So instead of save and send, we'll probably just hit save and close here. Uh, so that's pretty much the basics, and so it'll record your net cash activity. Um, so then when you decide it's time to make a, 
a cash deposit, you can actually just record a transfer in QuickBooks Online. And to do that, you just hit New and then Transfer. So basically, you'd be transferring money from your uh, cash in drawer to your checking. And you can see the balance 860.25. That's the amount of our net cash activity, you know, which is these two numbers combined. So that's how it works. If you have any more specific questions, feel free to contact me, Casey Moss Tax and Accounting, LLC in Illinois. You can reach me at CaseyMossTax.com.